On August 12th, we challenged nine planners to tell us about current issues or projects in the Washington, D.C. region. To make it fun and fast-moving, we gave them just seven minutes and 21 slides each to get their points across. Join us now for these presentations as they were enjoyed in NCPC's Commission Chambers that rainy evening. But next up is uh, Andrew uh, Devetter. How did you got I do? Yeah, okay. Uh, who is going to talk about uh, rerouting the Blue Line, uh, and he is from Arlington County. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Devetter. I'm a research planner with Arlington County, uh, and this evening I'm very curious about rerouting the Blue Line and what this means uh, potentially for Arlington County's uh, metro corridors. Uh, now, Bob gave a great presentation and really set me up for Rosalind Boston. So uh, very quickly, that's on the orange line in North Arlington. Uh, and the other corridor that uh, was not discussed as much is the Jeff Davis corridor, also known as Route 1, uh, in South Arlington. And um, what I'm very curious in is the uh, um, uh, connection here with the blue line. And so what's happening is uh, um, population growth is obviously occurring in these corridors. Um, and primarily in Crystal City, Boston, and Roslyn. So we're seeing a tremendous increase in population. One of the goals of the county uh, is to have this population growth occur with a minimal increase in um, uh, traffic. So what's the problem? The problem, uh, well, is metro congestion. And specifically, that's on the orange line uh, at Roslyn. Um, and so, you know, those zombies are up there in between Courthouse and Roslyn, and, and for those of you on the orange line, if you get on, you know it can be quite congested. So what's uh, on the table is to take some of that service on the blue line, um, reduce it between Roslyn and the Pentagon, and then sort of move it over the 14th Street Bridge where there's more capacity. So um, there's a lot of trade-offs, and I'm interested in the framework of what does this mean for Arlington? Who's traveling in between our corridors now that they're 30 years old or, you know, approaching 40? Um, and that's what I hope to discuss. Um, so where are people coming from? If we look at the Roslyn Boston corridor, um, these are people that are heading there in the morning for work. So this is your morning commute. Um, in blue is, uh, I'm sorry, in red is uh, that's where they live. Um, so that's their place of residence. And blue is where they get on the metro. So you can see a lot of people coming in at the end of the line. Um, also a, a significant portion doing a reverse commute um, from uh, some of the Orange Line stations in DC. Um, but functionally, this is an extension of downtown in terms of employment. Um, the majority, of course, are coming in from D.C. and Maryland. And you do see uh, a portion here, 27% coming in from the south. So for the framework here, I'm, I'm really looking at our corridors. So that 13% we've got coming in from Jeff Davis. I know there's people coming in from Alexandria, but unfortunately, I only have seven minutes. So I'm just going to talk about Arlington. Um, so where are they going for people that live here? They're going downtown and they're going to Farragut West. Um, and for those of you who ride that in the morning, you're very much aware. Uh, but a few are, uh, about 9% are headed to points south, so a more network, less radial-based, oh, sorry, jargon alert, uh, system. Um, but look at that, 80% DC. Clearly, that's one of the reasons why it's important to uh, address this capacity issue as the Roslyn Boston corridor fills out and continues to grow. But we do have a 6% who are heading out to Crystal City and Pentagon City and the Pentagon. Um, so looking at the Jeff Davis corridor, you know, where are they coming from in the morning? Um, very similar, they're coming from all over. Um, but of course with the prevalence here, uh, it's points in the south, uh, and not as many coming in from the orange line in the west, more coming in from, uh, DC and Maryland, and about a 6%, um, uh, coming in from Roslyn Boston. So six, eight, we're not seeing huge numbers. Um, there's really not a ton of uh, inner corridor travel going on on the metro uh, for Arlington. Now, of course, there's other people flowing in and out, but I only have seven minutes, so I'm not interested in them. <laughs> um, so where are they going? For the people that live in the Jeff Davis corridor, you can see that they're, they're coming in from a variety of places because they take the bus uh, to the Pentagon or to Pentagon City. Um, but in a lot of cases, they're, they're going downtown and they're taking the yellow line to those more central points uh, in D.C. Uh, but we do see uh, Roslyn has a, a much higher uh, blue dot there. Roslyn was something that stood out in this. Um, you know, we see about 80% heading north, but that's still nine, you know, still low. But they're not just heading to the Roslyn-Boston corridor. Um, they're, they're really heading to Roslyn. And a lot of those people are coming in on the VRE. They're coming in because they're slugging. Um, and then they're transferring to the metro. Um, but surprisingly for me, uh, as someone who lived in Clarendon, and I expected everybody goes to work in Crystal City, there's actually more 
Jeff Davis corridor people coming into the Roslyn Boston corridor. Um, and they're primarily coming in from Crystal City and the Pentagon, and 75% of them are going to Roslyn. Um, so Roslyn really is the key, and we don't have too much bus connectivity um, from Roslyn to other parts of uh, the county. Now, new lines have gone online with the ART bus. Perhaps to, to echo Nat's points, we do have an ART bus system in Arlington, and its growth is geometric. Um, and they've added new service. Um, they used to have little uh, shuttle buses that would connect you to the metro. Um, now they have these full-fledged buses uh, that, that are connecting our corridors to each other and taking you within the corridors. Um, and so some of these recent um, initiatives that have happened include the 38B, which is called the Orange Line with a View. So some snazzy marketing and a new signage on a bus and you can increase ridership. Why haven't we all been doing this? Um, and of course, Pike Ride on Columbia Pike. Um, improvements in uh, the way the buses operate, improvements in the stops, the signage, the marketing, the delivery. These are things that, that Arlington is aware of and we're aggressively pursuing um, through efforts with Arlington County Community Services. Um, and of course, the streetcar initiative on Columbia Pike. Um, and so for, for the county, we really have to think about our corridors as more than just metro corridors. Um, they're 30 to 40 years old. They've got more life to them, and the bus is going to be a key component. Um, I mean, to, to echo that zombie theme, uh, you know, if you live in Boston, you can take a bus to the Pentagon, and it's going to get you there in the same amount of time for less money, and you don't have any zombies at Roslyn, so that's the perfect marketing message. Um, so as we move forward, uh, this is uh, looking at, from Boston, looking uh, east. Uh, you can see the monument in, in the background. The future of our corridors is not necessarily moving beyond Metro, but it's supplementing it and really getting the message out there um, that someone doesn't have to ride the Metro from Boston to Roslyn. We have several bus routes that can do the same thing. Um, and if we make the right initiatives with those uh, priority corridor networks, um, we can really get people moving, uh, take some of that pressure off, um, and help the county and its corridors uh, move on into the next generation of not just Metro corridors, uh, but transit corridors. So thank you.